How to use the filter gallery in Photoshop. First thing to do, open an image, that's the key thing. Once you've got an image, go to filter and then filter gallery, select that. And then you'll see a panel come up and it's got a whole range of different options. So you've just got uh, artistic, you've got a whole range of brushstroke features and so on and so on. You can scroll through the list and see all the different options. So it's about, I don't know, 30 or 40 of them. So just go through extended edges and each of them of course have got their own settings. So you, you might have one sort of effect applied. And if you just modify the different settings, you can actually create a virtually completely different effect. So it's a really great graphic pen and you can just go through all those. You can change the stroke direction, you can change the light, darkness, etc. Up to you, what you want for the settings and move that around. And you can create a whole different range of illustration effects that way. Click OK at that point. Now, once you've actually done that, what you can also do, I'm going to zoom in there so you can actually see the image a bit better. You can also use, I'm just going to undo the filter gallery at that point, but you can also change the colour of the foreground and background colour. That's the key thing here. So you can actually go, so maybe make that blue, maybe make it orange, and then go back into the filter gallery and you'll see some of the filters, not all of the filters in that, will be able to use that uh, change of colour. So go filter, filter gallery. So you can scroll through the list and you'll, you, know, you can see that one actually creates a nice colour effect. Quite a few of them in the sketch one actually use the uh, the colour. So you can just go through it and you see that one uses it as well. But then again, you might go to one like this one and that won't use the actual colour. So but you can go through them and select which ones. It would be nice actually if the actual thumbnail actually indicated whether they use the foreground or background. But it doesn't. It just shows, just click it. And uh, you can see sometimes they don't actually have any effect whatsoever in terms of the colour. Bass Relief is a good one. Chalk, that's another one. Conte, another one, and so on and so on. And again, you can modify in some cases foreground level, background level. What you can also do, you can also fade the effect. So you can just go, and once you've applied the effect, you can go to Edit and then Fade Filter Gallery. You can do that with other filters as well, of course. And you can then use Darken, multiply different blending modes as well as the opacity as well to modify the effects slightly different and once you're happy with that click OK again I'm just going to undo at that point and undo the effect itself as well and again you can change the colours at any time so you can go for maybe black black and orange black and white black and green green and white whatever you want and you'll see the effect in that uh, preview there and again you can modify the different settings up and down depending what you want. Click OK once you're happy. And again you can use the fade edit menu and fade or just undo the filter effect if you don't want it. Go to filter and filter gallery And you can also add additional filters. So you can actually just at the bottom, you'll see a little, yeah, little thumbnail, little icon, what you want to call it, down the bottom. Just click on that and then you'll generate. And it will generate exactly the same effect that you've actually selected. So it's Conte Crayon. It will just generate a Conte Crayon. Then you can just go through the scroll, scroll through the list or select one of the thumbnails and change the thing. You can see the change there. It's bass relief, film grain, and it will just keep changing it. And both effects are applied. So it's not just one suddenly you will see both applied in that. And you can, of course, modify the settings for each of those. So select one of those, or you can disable it. Just click there, you can see the effect. Just, just click again, that one. And you can see the different options available to each of those things. You can go backwards and forwards, or change the actual filter. You don't have to keep the existing filter. So you go to Diffuse, and then click OK, and you've got the effect there. Undo that again. You can also use selections. That's a really great way of actually applying effect just to a particular area. Say you want like the face, maybe the horse, maybe the face of the person, maybe the arms, whatever you want, particularly anything. So you can select and then maybe invert the image, invert the selection, and then apply the filter, filter gallery to that there. So you can see obviously that's got uh, the filter effect applied. The face hasn't. Click OK and you can see the then deselect. And you Go back to the original image as well. 
What you can also do is use the layer menu and convert to smart object. The great thing about smart objects is they're non-destructive. So basically you can apply effects before, but now as a smart object, any effects you apply can be modified at any point. So let's say layer and then convert to a smart object. And you can then go to back to the filter, filter gallery. And now that's a smart filter. And that smart filter, I'm just gonna remove one of those. You can also delete as well. So you can do that, apply the effect, modify the settings, change that, change its circle, and so on and so on. Click OK. And you can see then, you see that little smart filters. That's in the layers panel. You can disable it, you just basically click there. And what you can do, double click on the filter gallery setting there. You can actually then change the settings again. So it's, it's like I say, it's non-destructive, so it it's, can be altered at any point. You can tweak the settings, change that, click OK, and you can see again the effect there. You can also double click on the right of the smart filter and over there, filter gallery, and you can actually double click on that. And what happens, it will bring up a little panel that's basically your blending modes, exactly the same like the fade. So you can go through multiply, you can also change the opacity. So click OK. And that will be for each of the entries for the filter gallery. So if you've got multiple filter galleries entries there, you can change the blending modes for each of them. Now, you can also go filter and filter gallery, just like I was saying. You can actually apply, add another effect. So I'm just going to go and select, say, stamp, which obviously modify the setting. And then you can see two entries. And again, you can modify the blending modes for each of those. So double click on the one you want and change maybe that to dark and multiply, whatever you want, click OK. And again, you can disable them at any point if you want. So if you disable one or the other if you want. You can also modify the mask of the smart filter. So you can see that white there, that, that mask. So you can actually click on that. While you're clicking on that, what you can do, you can just add like gradients, you can add shapes and much more brush strokes. So you can apply the gradient. Sometimes the gradient maybe is not so effective. Depends on the gradient, of course, as well as the actual mode and much more. I'm just going to go back again. So what you can do, select makes and you've got it selected. Then go over to like the rectangle tool and then make certain pixels. And then you can just go over there, set the color, obviously maybe black. And then you, as black, you can actually select that, apply it, and you can see the face there. All the rest of the image is applied as the filter. So and again, of course, what you can do, again, go to that smart filter, go to the filter gallery entry, double click on that, and then you can modify the actual, you can see you can change that, maybe change it to that, bass relief, click OK, and you can see the effect applied there. And again, obviously, the other image is still untouched. Yeah, hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.